So we're now going to talk about the weight space decomposition for representations of compact groups in general. So let's suppose we have a compact group G. We know that G contains a maximal torus T from what we've said in the last few videos. So what we're going to do is given a representation of G, we're going to restrict that to just a representation of T and decompose the vector space on which the representation acts into weight spaces for this maximal torus. So here's a bit more notation that's going to be useful in what follows. So let little t be the Lie algebra of the maximal torus. So what is little t in examples? You know, for example, if, if we're looking at SU3, uh, little t is the set of diagonal matrices i theta 1, i theta 2, minus i theta 1 plus theta 2, the things you exponentiate to get the maximal torus. Uh, we're going to complexify the Lie algebra of G, and inside that we're going to find the complexification of little t, which I'm going to call h. So why am I calling this H instead of like something with T? Well, everybody calls this H. Um, it's often called a Cartan subalgebra of the Lie algebra. Um, so I'm going to stick with this notation for consistency with everybody else. So that would be where we allow theta one, theta two in little t to be complex. What we're really interested in is these matrices H theta, which are just theta one, theta two minus theta 1 plus theta 2. This was the set of matrices we really talked about most uh, when we looked at SU3. So you can see those are going to be where we take i times little t. So let h subscript r be i times little t. So this subscript r is because now the entries of h theta are going to be real numbers. So this is a subset of little h. Okay, so given a complex representation um, R of G on a vector space V, uh, we know that V splits as a direct sum of weight spaces W lambda, where W lambda is now the set of Vs in V such that R of X I, I'm going to call it capital theta, this is just going to be an element of um, little t. Uh, actually, sorry, no, this is going to be an element of uh, little h r. So the I theta lives in little t, and then X I theta lives in the maximal torus. So R X I big theta of the equals e to the i lambda of big theta of v. Okay, this was our notion of weight space. And this is for all big theta in h little r. So lambda is therefore a map from little h r to, well, it's going to be to r because you know, lambda is really, lambda of, of, of theta is really something like lambda 1 theta 1 plus dot 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 plus lambda n theta n, where the thetas are all real and the lambdas are going to be integers. So lambda of theta is going to be real. So lambda really lives in the dual space to h subscript r. In other words, there's a linear map from little h r to the reals. So the weight diagrams we've been drawing are subsets of this vector space, h little r star. So you know this, for SU2, we had the line with some dots. Those That line was um, little h r dual, where in this case, h is really just a one-dimensional vector space. So what were these dots? really what you know what is this lattice of dots here um, in terms of the Lie algebra and the Lie group and things 
Well, we know that if um, x by theta equals the identity, then certainly r of x by theta has to act as the identity. So e to the i lambda of theta has to be 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a lattice, which I'm going to write as h little h subscript z inside little h subscript r to be the lattice um, of thetas in little h, oops, little h r, such that x i theta equals the identity. And now what we know is that our weights live in the dual lattice, which I'll write as h z star inside little h r star, where this is defined to be um, the set of lambdas such that lambda of theta is an integer. Actually, this should be probably two pi times an integer, right? Because what it's supposed to be is e to the i lambda of theta equals one. So this needs to be two pi times an integer uh, whenever uh, theta is in h subscript set. Okay, so this is just rephrasing what I said in this line here that we know that if e to the x of i theta is the identity, then e to the i lambda of theta is one. So that's just telling us our weights can't just be any old elements of h r star, they have to live in a specific lattice. And this is called the weight lattice because that's where the weights live. So all the pictures we've been drawing, right, this dotted paper we had, that was the weight lattice, the dots were the weight lattice, and the weight diagrams were just a subset of the weight lattice. So for example, for SU2, um, little h z is the set of, uh, what is the set of thetas, such that exp i theta equals the identity. In other words, this is the set of uh, integer multiples of 2 pi. And its dual, h z star, is the set of numbers lambda such that uh, lambda times 2 pi n is in 2 pi times the integers for all n. Um, so then that is just the integers inside r. Okay, so our weight lattice for that example is really just the integers inside the real numbers, where this r is h r star. For SU3, I told you it was like a triangular lattice where the, um, you know, the sort of axes in the lattice are separated by uh, an angle of 120 degrees. So in the next video, I'm gonna explain where that angle comes from. Um, basically, these lattices come equipped, and um, these vector spaces, h star r, come equipped with a natural notion of geometry called the killing form. And it's with respect to that geometry that the angle is 120 degrees.